Hello, all the people listening to our podcast. Today we have another really special guest here. We have uh, Ryan Fellan here, and he is from Texas, US, and he is a managing partner for a full service email marketing agency called RPE Origin. And the company is based, uh, the headquarters is based in Los Angeles, and they are creating go to market strategies for successful companies all over the world. And uh, I think there is nobody else better knowing how to make really good email marketing campaigns besides Ryan. So Ryan, welcome and introduce yourself. Thank you very much. I'm so happy to be here this morning, this evening, this afternoon, wherever you're watching, whenever you're watching. Uh, thanks for the lovely intro. Uh, I'm the managing partner for RPE Origin, as you said. Uh, we are a full service vendor agnostic email agency. So we work with enterprise companies to help them accelerate their innovation in email. Uh, and that can take so many different forms from creative technical integrations, RFPs, migrations, campaign setup, segmentation strategies, uh, creative strategies, and CRM. Really, if it lives within the email world, uh, we do it and have been doing it for the last 18 years. So uh, really excited to be here uh, today to talk to you. That is a long time. So tell me what brought you to email? Why did you start doing emails? Because, you know, if I think back about 18 years, I was basically a child and the email was like, yeah, I can send an email to my friends, but email marketing, what the hell was that 18 years ago? It was nothing. Well, it's even worse because I have been in email for 25. Um, so uh, I started uh, back in email. Uh, I have kind of a different career uh, path. I, I graduated college uh, having studied to be a Catholic priest. Uh, and having discovered that I didn't want to be a Catholic priest, I thought, well, what's, what's the next career for me? And I thought, oh, DJing in a nightclub, this will be fun. So I did that for about six years and then uh, discovered that the email or the, the DJ business really didn't have much of a future. Uh, and so at the time, uh, that was during the dot-com boom back in uh, 98, 99. And so I applied to a, a little internet company in Omaha, Nebraska and came on as, and ran their affiliate marketing program and their email program. And those were back in the days where you had to code an email for AOL, you had to code an email for everybody else, and I actually sent the email off of my laptop using an installed program. Uh, and that was that was the early days of email. And uh, it has been a great career. I've worked on the retail side, um, worked for a lot of ESPs uh, over the last 25 years, and and it's it's fantastic to see the dichotomy between 1998 and where we are today in 23. How many emails did you send out in one day back in 1999? Oh, it was like 1,500 was like a big day. Oh, but that's a big number. Yeah. And you so, sent it like basically one by one or did you actually like mass mail them? There was, a, it was mass mailing. So we would get the emails off of the website and then the the tech team would send me a file. I would upload it into this program. I can't even remember what the program was, was called. Uh, and then load my HTML, put in the subject line, all that stuff, and hit send. And literally, my computer would become a mail server and deploy these messages out uh, to the world, and, and off we go. That sounds awesome. It's like the... It was future being made in, in this 1999 year because we do the same right now, but back then I would not have imagined that we could do this thing. Oh, no. It was totally, you know, back then it was if you got 100 or $200 or $300 worth of sales, that was fantastic. There was no tracking, no ability to figure out what it came from. Um, analytics was just starting um, in its, in, you know, was in its infancy. And really, there was no sophistication. It was we have a thing to send, and let's send it, and and off it went. And and you know we progressively got better. You saw the advent of the uh, the SaaS providers, and and uh, actually having a program 
you know, to to uh, administer your emails. But I, I think the best the best part of that uh, experience was to get on the whitelist for AOL. Was now this is 1998. The way to get on the whitelist to AOL to get your emails in the door. The best way was to be friends with the AOL postmaster, and I used to send her gift certificates every quarter so that she would be happy with us and that we could get in the in the in in the door. And that's how you know we got granted into sending emails into AOL. Well, I can imagine that if you want to send mails to mail.ru, it would still have to do the same yes. thing nowadays. Yes. <laughs> But I actually, wish it was that easy right now with Spam House. Just send them some gift oh, certificates and they'd be yes. fine. But that's not how that works. Yeah, Spam House, if you are listening to this, then please start accepting all the gift certificates. Yes, yes. please contact me. I have some <laughs> gift certificates. <laughs> exactly. Oh, I think we can make another episode about the, the past. <laughs> the early the marketing. days. Yes. Uh, but today we are here to talk about how to make uh, events happening really well uh, with the help of email marketing. And uh, as I understand, you have you have kind of an experience in that field as well. Yes. So uh, back when I was in that first job, uh, I was kind of a dual role. I was doing email and affiliate marketing, and I kind of name a na made a name for myself in the affiliate marketing world early on. Uh, and we would throw events. Uh, we, our first event was at Baruch College in New York, uh, and our next two were on a cruise ship going around the Caribbean nice. and uh, then fast forward and I you know I, I left the affiliate world and, and got into the email world uh, pretty heavy uh, and then fast forward I was the chairman of the EEC through the direct marketing association the EEC is the email experience council and it was the leading kind of trade organization in the United States for email and I was the chairman of that organization for two years. I was the coach, or I was the uh, vice chair for two years. And during that time, a lot of the responsibility for running our annual show fell to me to run not only the programming and logistics, but to also, on the other side of it, run the email programs and, and communication. Now, throughout my career in different roles, I've also been in charge of holding, I mean, I've done a half a zillion webinars uh, both as a guest and and also as uh, hosting them for the companies I work for. So I've I've been ingrained in events for the last twenty five years in some way, shape, or form. So uh, basically, if you would have to start, uh, but probably you already have some some of them uh, going on. But if you start a new webinar or a new event, how do you start planning email marketing into the planning of the event? That's a great question. I start every webinar with why should people give a damn? Uh, That's a good question. Yes, because there's so, I mean, anybody can sit around, any marketer can sit around and think of a topic that they want to have for a webinar, right? But really you have to start with that initial, you know, start with your ideas, but then you have to eliminate ones based on, are people going to show up? Are they really that interested? Does it align with my brand? There's a strategic layer. And, and throughout my career, one of the things I've always talked about is this, the role of strategy before tactics. It's not just about putting together the webinar, the logistics of it, or the emails of it. It's about that preliminary step of strategy that says, why should they care? Does it align with my brand goals? What's my conversion events? What's my macro and micro conversion events? And all these kind of questions you have to figure out. And then once you have all those questions answered, almost in a brief, right? I've done it before where all of those questions for the webinar were had to be answered in a brief. Then you go on to the email marketing creation in how do you, you know, what touch points do you need? What's the topics? What's your acquisition strategy? Even with acquired emails, what's your internal and external strategies? Um, but the emails start when you have that initial strategy, then the emails almost write itself, right? And if you're good at email marketing, if you're good at hosting events, you have a template-driven approach of things that you know work, and you're just replicating that success over time and adding in incremental innovation to test out new, new ways of doing things. 
Okay, so you mentioned there are some certain touch points that uh, uh, integrates the webinar and the, and the clients who will attend the webinar. So what are the initial, like, what are the typical touch points? So, I mean, you have your, your initial announcement, right? You've got a mm -hmm. list of, you've got a database of emails. You have an initial announcement, then you usually have some follow-ups leading up to the event, right? Those are your, those are your static touch points, right? That have to exist for, for pretty much every kind of event you do. But then there's a granularity to that, right? Right now, since COVID, and I've talked a little bit about this uh, in the last couple of years, prior to COVID, we were balanced between strategy and tactics. Uh, marketers thought about what they needed to do and then they did it. And then COVID hit and tactics trumped strategy. Strategy went out the window. We didn't have time for strategy. What we had time for during COVID was just quick reaction pivot. We got to get it done. The problem with that is, and it worked at the time. It was what was needed. It's what we had to do. I don't know anybody that sat around for a long period of time and thought about the strategy of things. They might have, but it was a quick like, hey, should we do it? Yes, we should. That's off we go. But we've retained that muscle memory that we had for two years of this tactical driven um, exper uh, uh, experience. And so when you're putting together an event, you're now in a you're now competing with every other appointment somebody has in their calendar. I mean, we always have, right? Events have always had to compete with the needs of the day. And so when you're putting together your emails, it's about cutting through and making your event, your webinar, your conference, more important than the need of the day. And that goes back to picking the topic of what you're gonna do, right? You have to be the one thing that somebody highlights in their calendar is I must attend this and it's a hard block. If you don't communicate that effectively, then the events of the day will go away because it's recorded and I'll just get the recording, but I'll never watch the recording because I don't have the, I don't have the intent, nor do I have the, uh, 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 the pressing deadline to listen to it. Right. And so You've got to start thinking about sales. You've got to be, as a marketer, you can't just market, you gotta sell it. And you gotta sell it hard. So what am I doing outside of those default emails? Well, I'm looking at segmentation to people that have come to them before. That's my loyalist. Those are my people that I wanna to appeal to. And I'm gonna go out and I'm gonna to communicate to them one way. Prospects, if I have information about prospects in terms of what products they're interested in, what services, what they're, company is like, then I'm going to want to change my message to that. Events have gotten more complex in that segmentation is key to getting people to show up. If you want a 40, 30 to 40% show rate, fantastic. Just do your basic, hey, I got to do a thing. If you want to get it 50, 60%, if you want to get all those, you know, way more people, you have to work at it. You can't just pass off an event and say, oh, they'll come. They won't come. Unless you give them a reason. That is so true. Uh, when we have been doing webinars here in Estonia with many different com uh, companies, then uh, the usual drop-off rate is like 50%. So 100% of people sign up and only 50 of them actually attend the webinar. The rest probably yep. just uh, forgot about it or they thought that they will watch the recording later, which, as you said yourself, they never will do. Yeah, yeah. And it's there's too much noise. There's too many things going on. And then we're, we're coming into fourth quarter, right? In the, and, and typical retail holiday sales start to kick in and, and people don't do webinars in fourth quarter unless you're an executive, right? But to be honest, any time during the year, you're having to work harder to rise to the level of importance that trumps the rest of the day. Exactly. That is so true. That is really true. Um, now, you did mention that having people at the, at the live webinar is much more important than having people watch the recording. Why is that so? Um, you have a captive audience. They signed up. They came, right? Recordings are great, right? 
But recordings are the secondary choice of, of, oh, I'll just watch the recording. We all know, personally, if I say, oh, I'll just watch the recording, I'm not going to watch the recording. I'm not. Let's be honest. And you're not either, right? I, I, it, because it doesn't take precedence. And if I have free time, I'm not going to spend it watching a webinar. Now, there are some that I, admittedly, I do because it's critical that I listen to it. But as a default, if I don't have the deadline of it's happening today, it's harder for me to prioritize that. When when people show up now, now you have an even greater competition. You have to rise above the podcast uh, mentality that says I'm just going to listen to it and multitask. Mm -hmm. And so you have to structure your webinar to be so engaging that it rises above you know, before we were talking about rising above the events of the day. Now we're talking about the events of now. And those events of now are trying to do your email, trying to catch up. Hey, I got an hour webinar. I'm going to kind of listen to it. Studies have shown over and over and over again that it is impossible to multitask with comprehension. That is true. You, you cannot work on email and have a webinar and do both. Your brain literally cannot do it and it's 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 fascinating right and so what you have to do throughout the webinar is how do you pull people in well you pull people in with great conversation with energetic viewers but you also do it with visuals can i show a chart can i show a graph can i show an example can i pull people back in uh uh, uh throughout that experience to keep them interested and that's where you really, again, have to work harder in your prep for the event. Now, this event, the event you're doing leads to the next one, right? If I made this compelling and this important, then my next one is going to have a greater take rate because the last one was, was frigging awesome, right? That is true. And it's like, a, it's like a way of marketing itself. If your event was boring, then nobody wants to show up to the next second event anyways, because people start telling to other people as well that, hey, that's, that's actually, it wasn't worth my time. But if you are an energetic person and, uh, and you talk uh, valuable information, then people do want to come next time as well. No matter what you talk about, they still want to listen to you. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. Yes. So that is, that is really true. Yeah. And I think it's also impossible. It, it it's important, and I do this during my webinars. Is I'll watch the number of attendees, and if it starts to drop off, I've got to change up the topics or the flow or the energy or something like that. Right? The loss of one or two people is important, right? Especially if you're talking about half of the people that signed up, right? So you have to watch those micro moments, those micro actions by the by the viewers to make sure that you're not losing the people that you have. Now, you always account for the bottom of the hour. Some people can only stay for the first half hour or whatever, but you have to watch the active stats that you can get on whatever platform you're doing it on. Mm -hmm. That is true. Yes. Mm. You mentioned before that, uh, actually, no, I'm asking it in a, in a different way. Um, is the webinar itself like the goal that you want people to get to, or is there something happening after the webinar that you want people to do? So is like is webinar like a marketing thingy, or do you have some sales that you want to do after the webinar? Which is more important? Um, I want them to do something after the webinar, right? I want them to show intent in some way. Um, if they're a customer, I want my, you know, back when I was talking about the brief, right? I want to have my different conversion events for my different segments. So customers, prospects, uh, uh, general public, whatever, right? And so I, I want to set those conversion events and I want to make sure that I give the, the impetus for that. If they're customers, I want my account people to follow up and go, hey, what did you think? Do you have any feedback? You know, what, 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 what do you have to say about the content that you watched, right? And what I want the conversion back is, the conversion event for customers is, no, that was great. It was helpful. I'd love to get a follow-up to talk to X, Y, or Z to understand this. That's my conversion event for customers. 
right? The micro conversion is, it was a great event. I really enjoyed it. The team did a great job. My macro is, I want to follow up and get more information. On prospects, there's a macro and a, a micro and a macro. A micro is, I want to see further intent on the website or checking out blogs or coming back to the website, repeat purchase or repeat visit. Um, the, the bigger conversion event is uh, the salesperson emails and says, hey, how did you, you enjoy this? And they come back and, and same with customers, right? It was really good, really enjoyed it. Uh, I want to talk to X, Y, or Z about it. Or, hey, let's get on the phone and talk about this, this thing that the speaker talked about that you guys do, right? That drives intent forward down the, down the hill. So really during the brief process is where you set your, your conversion events. It is a micro conversion to show up. It is a macro conversion to, uh, to act. And that's where you have these cascading conversion events throughout this experience um, that should tie into uh, a journey or a post-marketing uh, or post-event uh, activity, something like that. But you have to track those, those conversion events throughout that life cycle so that you can see what your success or failure is. Mm -hmm. So basically, if you start planning out the event, uh, do you already have the segments ready before you start planning out the event? Or do you segment people while sending them the emails to come and join the event and uh, uh, while sending the after webinar uh, emails oh, as I've well? Oh, I've got it all queued. Yeah, that's a great question. I've got it all queued up, right? I know who my, you know, I've got my, you know, prior to the event, that's all in my control and and also the salespeople and the account managers, right? To reach out and get as many people as we can. But after the event, I've got all those emails queued up. I've got them all ready to go. I have the, you know, when I get the file back from the, the studio, whatever uh, program I used, I can see who attended, who didn't. Hopefully I can see level of interest if I was front of screen or back of screen. And I have my different segments and my different emails, and I want people to act on that as soon as the recording is live and up there. And I know everybody says, hey, in the next couple of days, we'll get the recording up. No, you know what? I want the same frigging day. I want people to get that recording up on the website. I want it to convert that day, not because of the people that missed it, but because of the people that saw it that may want to forward it to somebody else. You've got a short window of time why not encourage them to share that with their coworkers, right? You've got, you know, in just talking about this, there's so many things that go into an event. And I think we just get into this mindset of just phoning it in of, I'm going to send four emails before the event. I'm going to post some ads on LinkedIn. And after the event, I'm going to say, uh, thank you for uh, attending. And here's the recording and have a nice day. That's it. Right. We're also busy and tactic driven. That's the only thing we can support. But when you really think about dissecting events, whether they're conferences or whether webinars, it is it is you got to work at it if you want results. I think that like, I, I do think that most of us who are doing webinars, we don't do the webinars just to do webinars. We do them right. because we, we, we want to advertise something. We want them to change their minds about something and we want them to start using our product or services. That's why we do webinars. So we should do a lot of follow-up as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you should. I mean, we're marketers. If you want success, it's hard work. It is exactly. And webinars is just one, one way of doing marketing, but uh, uh, it's not where it ends. You should continue it's doing not. other. Yes. You're absolutely, absolutely right. Okay. So, um, Give me some good examples of what have you done with the uh, uh, viewers of the webinar after the webinar happened? Uh, did you send them some good material? So did you, did you invite them to, to book a demo or what was some, some cool thing that you have done? There were some where I was, I was hosting it and I was, you know, it was an interview of uh, somebody else and whatever. And I would reach out to those that, I knew were highly engaged and watched it day of and say, hey, would you like to talk to the, the, the guest speaker? Would you like some time, you know, to talk to the guest speaker? And, and I set this up ahead of time with the, with the guests that I had. And I said, hey, I want to book out 
three hours, four hours of your time in half hour chunks just for some special guests, right? And that came from the nightclub days. When I was in the nightclub, we had uh, we had concerts at the nightclub, and they were national acts that would come to our club, and we would have meet and greets. Meet and greets were if you were a VIP or you won a contest or whatever. You could come in and shake the hand of the artist and talk to him for a few seconds and then go about your merry way. But it was like a thing, right? And so if I carry that over to my webinar experience, if I have somebody that's got a name in the industry or in the space or in the topic matter, then I want to I want to reach out to those VIPs and say, hey, would you like a meet and greet? Would you like to just talk to them about some ideas off? And it is amazing to see people go, I would love that that would be a you know and so those are kind of the things that i kind of try to think out of outside of the box um others is personal follow-up just on if i'm a guest sometimes we'll do sponsored and we'll get the list of attendees and sometimes i'll sh i'll reach out personally and just say hey if you want any time here's my calendar link we do sales here a little bit different um in that it's a soft sell right we're here to help people and companies and i'm not I am not a sales guy. Uh, I am just a guy that wants to help people and, and companies and whatever. And so I often will reach out to people that are on webinars or that attend and just say, hey, is there anything I can do to help? Is, and I get free advice all over the place, right? I get, I get requests for calls all the time. And so when you throw that kind of engagement in, that personal connection, that's really taking it beyond the screen, right? And so um, other things would be tailored messages to uh, prospects, sending along assets that reinforce the message of the of the webinar or the event. Uh, with um, clients, I'll turn webinars generally into a QBR. Uh, so we'll do quarterly business reviews for all of our clients. And so I'll usually take some of the slides from a webinar and put them into the QBR and teach the 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 uh, account managers how to present that or what the details are so they can give a teaser and then have a recording link at the bottom. It's about the it's about the asset and not just having the asset on the day. It's about having the asset for a longer period of time. If I we just published a study talking about AI and email, I'm going to use that study for six months and I'm going to talk about it when I can and I'm going to write about it when I can because that was a considerable lift. Webinars are the same way. I put a considerable lift in. I want to use that asset beyond just putting it on the website as we did it as a checkbox. That is so true because also I have seen so many companies who just do the webinar and then they just forget about it. But you should publish yeah. it on your social media. You should publish it on your blog and not just one time, but repeatedly ask people to go back and watch the webinar because there was something useful in that webinar that they should know. And it's much more easier and convenient for all of us to throw people back at the webinar to have a look at it, uh, rather than having to call each one of person one by one and say, hey, this is what I would like to talk about. Yeah, yeah, and you raise a great point. When we do webinars like this, this one, right? I'll give this to my social media team and they'll promote it around the, 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 the event, but then they, I have them put it in rotation for six months and to say, hey, you know, every month or two, every month, we're going to put it in a rotation to punch back to that webinar because it just shouldn't live on the day or the month. It should live on in, in the amount of time. You guys put a lot of work into it. People, you know, I put a lot of work into it. I shouldn't, it shouldn't just be a flash in the pan. It exactly. shouldn't be a checkbox. Oh, we did a webinar with Ryan. Woo. You know, and so uh, we commonly will put it in a rotation. Uh, whether we hosted it or not. Exactly. And this is what we do webinars for. We do them for marketing purposes. And in the webinars, we share so much good information that maybe in the writing, it even doesn't sound so good because while I'm talking with you, I'm listening to all those really, really great examples. But if I write them down in two words, they don't sound that that, that crazy or, or that cool. Yeah, for yeah. example, the same one that you talked about with uh, talking to the main speaker, if you want to talk uh, for you know half an hour with the main speaker, that's a huge thing. But if I write it down, maybe it even doesn't sound so cool. But now if I'm listening, you talking about it, that sounds like, oh, my God, that is so cool idea. Yeah, yeah. 
and it's easy, right? I mean, I, I don't know anybody that's in the the that's been in this industry a long time that wouldn't give anybody a half hour to talk to them, right? And um, I, I think that that's just such an easy lift of of asking for as long as you don't like pile 10 people on some speed you know be selective yes. with it right it is somebody's time but you know i think everybody in this industry is fantastic and wants to help wants to you know i'm 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 i say quite a bit lift all boats right it, as thought leaders as presence in the marketplace it is our job and our responsibility to lift everybody up and that only comes from being a generous uh uh person in terms of of helping without uh, uh compensation exactly and i think all of our aim here is to understand and help other people understand what oh, is gotcha. marketing what, 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 why are we doing this and make it a good thing so that people don't spam around but actually do it purposefully and right. and this is, what, this is what we're doing here so of course we are here to help out Mm, my next question, actually, about webinars is um, probably you don't send all the emails out by hand. You do use some kind of automations as well, I, I would assume, at least. So oh, what, yeah. what, how do you automate uh, emails uh, when you're doing an event? I think, um, so how we do it is we have, and I spoke about this earlier, everybody has a template, right? The base layer of... Uh, an event is we've got an event. Hey, the event is coming. Hey, the event is coming. The event next week, the events tomorrow, the events today, right? That series of emails is a pretty static uh, uh, piece. And I think everybody, when you're starting off doing events, that's the, that's the, the, the basic set, right? Yes. And it shouldn't just be time, date, place. It should, every message should resonate different on a topic or a, uh, uh, a learning that you're going to get out of it, right? It should takes people down a progression of what you're going to get out of uh, the, the experience. I, I think how we do webinars is we've been doing them for so long, and I've been doing them for so long. We have different branches for different segments to talk differently, and so we'll label those templates you know, uh, action-based, tactic-based, strategy executive, you know, we'll, we'll have them kind of split out into, uh, into role or into uh, type, so prospect, customer, that kind of thing. Um, and we continually work with our clients that every time they do a webinar, we want to add a new branch or add a new complexity into that automation so that every time we do it, we're getting better. Right. That's that that concept of incremental innovation, which is you don't have to launch the perfect marketing automation, the perfect program all at once. You can launch a basic program and build on it over time so that over time you have a leap in innovation instead of putting that pressure on us to build everything and launch it all at once. And then it just took forever. Right. And it and it I think that's how we approach. It is how we approach marketing automation is to say there is a base layer of what you have to have but every time i'm going to make that better i'm going to change my message i'm going to change my creative i may you know one of the things we play around with a lot is when do we announce it uh proximate to the date right so a lot of people say do it three weeks before three uh, weeks before so the event Yes, three weeks mm -hmm. before the event, start pushing it, whatever. I'm of the belief that I think that you could, and we have done tests with this, and there's nothing conclusive, right? But I have done tests where I announce a webinar the week before. And how did it go? It, the, the, the show up rate was amazing. It was like 60% plus. It kind of makes sense as well because people don't they forget. They know their calendar. Yes. They know what's coming up, right? Three weeks out, I have, if you asked me today what my week is going to look like in three weeks, I wouldn't have a freaking clue. I may be yes. in Boston. I may be at home. There may be a fire drill. I got nothing, right? But the week before, people have a handle on their stuff. And I think there's an interesting, and I'd love to do it, right? 
is to test. Is it a week before? Is it a month before? It's hard to do because it kind of becomes a multivariate test because I got a topic, this topic that I'm going to do a week before, and I got this topic that I'm going to do three weeks before. Okay, fine. You got all kinds of different variables in there. But if you're doing a lot of webinars, test week before, whatever. And then another interesting test would be if you do it a week before, I am definitely going to show up. I can't show up, but I want the recording. Have that mm -hmm. choice ahead of time. But the whole theory is we're competing with the thing of the day. And so if I know my schedule, I may have a higher take uh, uh, attendance rate uh, at the webinar. So, you know, we try to play around with different tactics and strategies to see what works. And it doesn't, you know, doesn't always work, but it's something that it's like, hey, we're going to throw this into the thing. Of course, and if everybody, everybody in the world does it the same way, so that we all start advertising the three weeks before the webinar, uh, then it, it, everybody does it the same way. But if you do it differently, then you already have one step ahead because you are already different. Yeah, yeah. So, so yeah, that's also one thing. Hmm. Uh, but there is one question still arose in my head which is that if you have three weeks uh, to prepare for the webinar and to ask people to attend and to send them reminders and etc and now you have to do all of this in one week then does it change the number of emails that you send out before the webinar it does i would simply go through my automation and mark off emails that i'm not going to send right so a week before is announcement heavy on social heavy on email Right, I got it on every com. I got it on the website. I am blanketing the crap out of it. Right, week before, then you do middle, then you do day before, day of. So basically, you send uh, four emails within four one emails. week. Yes. Yep. Uh, and if you do it in three weeks, then how much more emails would you send? I'd add. Th I add three or four more emails in there. Right. Okay. So I want to. I I really don't want to pound the crap out of people, right? I mean, you either are gonna come to the webinar or not, right? And if I email you every friggin' day about the thing, or just get annoying, then I've created a negative brand experience. So I really want to balance out that schedule over three weeks. I want to go slow in the beginning. I want to go more in the in the uh, down to the event. And part of that ties into as you get closer to the event, you know your schedule, but you want this to be top of mind to rise to the top of the pile. But you also don't want to be an annoying marketer. And so um, you have to make the relevancy play in these emails. You need to make sure that you're expressing. Um, if we're in a tactical mindset as an industry, then what are your emails going to talk about? What are you going to get out of this? What are you going to learn? What are you going to be able to do? You're going to be able five minutes after this webinar to put together a marketing automation program for your next webinar. Fantastic. I'm showing up because I, I could use some help, right? That is something. It's not about what you will learn anymore. Learn is a strategy word. Do is a tactical word. And so what you want to be able to do is give the attendee something they can enact. And so if we're in this tactical mindset, remember that your audience is in the tactical mindset and they need they need crap that they can implement five minutes after they're done. I think that is true. And I think that, that this is also very important because we all live in this world where we need to learn new things so quickly that learning, it, it seems like a long-term process, but actually being able to just do something is really crucial because there have been like people who go to universities after universities just keep on learning but they never be able to do something but if you actually can do something then you have oh yeah uh, yeah exactly i you know i think it's also then this do mentality it's also about if you're a SaaS company right and you talk about something that's in your platform and that's your do thing right Make sure that in your post communications or even during the webinar, you post a how-to video about how to do it because it's not literally they're going to do it after the webinar ends when they just saw it done and they're going to remember what to do. Have that follow-up of, hey, here's 
here's a how-to video, here's an instructional video, here's a help guide, here's something, right? Think again about the, the, those conversion events and how can you assist with those conversion events uh, to, make, to make the adoption better. That is a great idea, actually, I have to tell you. Uh, yeah, um, really great. Um, the next question I wanted to ask uh, more about the emails that you send out before the webinar. Uh, what do you say in those webinars? Because, well, first of all, probably you would introduce the, uh, the host. You would introduce all the people who are going to be talking in the webinar. You're going to introduce the topic. Uh, but do you do it all in separate emails or you do it in one email? Or how do you do it? Sure. Let me walk you through the emails that I would put together. Yes, right? please. So the first email is the details, the speakers, the topic, and the the, the to-do. What are you going to be able to get out of this thing, right? And embedded to that is the reason to believe, right? The the answer to the question, why, do, why should anybody give a damn, right? And it's different between customers and prospects. And so you're going to have two emails. And... So you lay out the value proposition. Here's what we're going to review. Here's what we're going to talk about. This is an energetic speaker. This is an exciting topic. This is, you know, use your adjectives. Use your, you know, when people put me on webinars, they're always like energetic webinar with Ryan Phelan or it's going to be goofy as hell kind of thing, right? But get excitement built for this. And your first email is announcing it. Register now. Uh, make sure that everything's tight, your registration process is seamless, that your calendar invite is up to date. I get so many calendar invites registering for webinars that don't have the freaking link in it, or they point me at the LinkedIn, or some goofy thing, or the reminder doesn't go off 15 minutes before the webinar, whatever. So make sure your process is tight, send the first email. Then you're going to look at who opened the email, who registered for the email, who didn't open the email, who didn't click, all those lovely metrics that we have as email marketers. And then you're going to think about your segments for the next email, right? To people that registered, you're going to suppress those. You don't want those sent, uh, inviting them to the webinar anymore because that's just silly. For the people that didn't register, then you're going to send them the next email. And really that gap between the days is up to you, right? And, and dependent upon your timeline or or anything. So the second email is going to be, hey, you haven't registered. Let me give you another reason why. Oh, did I forget to tell you this speaker is blah, 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 right? You are in sell mode. You are trying to, re if, if remember what we talked about at the beginning. We talked about you have to rise above the events of the day. So your second email is going to be, gosh, this is, I'm so excited about this. Uh, uh, it is going to be a lot of fun. Here's some more details that we're going to talk about because now, remember, you're fishing for a topic that they're going to hook onto, something that they're going to want to talk about. You can't cover a 45-minute webinar or a 20-minute webinar, however long it is, um, in, in one email, right? So the next one is about the other topic. What else are we going to talk about? What else are you going to get out of it? What are you going to do? The third one is your third piece. Right? Oh, it's getting closer. You should have, you know what? And in, in sometimes in emails, just beaten blatant is it is just fine. And the third email, hey, you you should know what the hell your schedule looks like. You need to book this, right? So give another reason. Again, you're fishing for another hook into what they may be interested in. Uh, the fourth email. Let's say that this is the day before, and I'm just kind of I'm putting things in place, right? So the fourth email. Let's say it's two days before the the webinar. Reiterate the value prop, reiterate what you're getting out of it, summarize the last three emails that you've sent. This is what we're going to cover. This is what I'm going to cover. Register now, blah. Right? And all along, you're looking at open clickers and suppressing registrants, all that kind of stuff, right? And this is the base layer. Now, your day before. Hey, we're getting warmed up. Here's a shot behind, you know, be funny if your brand allows you to be funny. Take a picture of an empty microphone or an empty desk or, you know, the setup or a rehearsal call or something like that. Um, hey, we're getting ready. We're really excited. We thought of another thing we could talk about, right? This is your last chance to get somebody uh, to get somebody there, right? Besides the day of, but, you know, the day before. So think of one more thing you could talk about, 
one more asset, maybe it's an asset you're going to send after. Maybe it's a new development in the industry that you're going to touch on. You had a rehearsal call. Is there anything new that came out of that? There always is, right? There yes. always is. So then you're sending that out. Then day of, we're going to be really sad if you're not there. Yeah, you can watch the recording, but it's not as good as live because you can submit your questions to these speakers and we'll answer them, right? That's your final value prop is the difference between live and recorded is you can ask the speakers or the speaker questions and he'll answer them or she'll answer them. That's your final value prop, your final impetus to get somebody registered. And then you're off to the event, right? Now, all along, social media is following this. You're doing segmentation. You're looking at your prospects and your customers. You're looking at opens and clicks and registered. You're looking at all those different things and hopefully have different messages for each, right? And open is not a anything I'd look at anymore, but click is, right? So you really have to think about those messages long stream. And every time you do it, you test another message, test a different approach, a different timing. You want that template to be the template that works for you. Um, what do you think about uh, giving away some tips or tricks inside the emails? For example, if we are going to talk about how to make a perfect webinar in a marketing, in a webinar, then I would already give you one point that, hey, I will already give you one good idea, which is that you should start marketing the event three weeks before. This is one tip that we will talk about. But if you want to listen to more, then come to the webinar. Do you think that is a, a good tactic or oh, not? Oh, gosh, yeah. Yeah. I think okay. anything you could do to tease out what you talked about, right? Uh, especially if you're doing pre-recorded, right? And your audience knows that it's pre-recorded, right? Um, you won't, you'll be surprised that, that we learned that a week before is okay, right? Those kind of messages tease people into the importance of the topic that you're, that you talked about, right? Mm -hmm. And those kind of thing on pre-recorded is fantastic to tease out. Um, don't give away the farm, but say, Hey, we got into a, we got into a great discussion about the efficacy of doing a webinar with a week lead time. Now, yeah, that's a good one. Yeah. That draws people in to go a week. I got to hear this. How, how did you do it? How did you do it? Exactly. And so, um, you know, that's a tease, right? We're yes. going to talk about it. I'm not going to tell you what the answer is, but we talked about it and it should draw you in. Again, all your webinars are hooks. You're going fishing. And every time you send an email, you're fishing for the hook that gets somebody interested enough to sign up for your webinar. Now, along the same lines of getting people to sign up, you have to have a separate stream of the people that signed up. That was exactly my second question. What do you do with them? I, I read your mind. So you um, the, the people that signed up, you're wanting to email them a similar message to your sign up email, but change to, to acknowledge that they've signed up, right? Again, you're competing for the time during the day. And so what you want to do is continue to drive home the importance of showing up. Now, you may or may not email at the same frequency, but you want to test into that, right? If I sign up for something three weeks before, my week is going to start coming together for the next week, the week before that, right? Or the week after that. And then the week of, I'm going to be looking at my calendar going, how can I, how can I have lunch, right? It, and how do I find time to have lunch or to take a walk or something? You know, so you have to develop the emails that are similar to the cell, but they acknowledge the sign up and they say, remember, we're going to talk about this. Here's something else we're going to talk about. You are so lucky to be signed up. We are filling up fast and it's going to be fantastic, right? Give updates, give behind the scenes kind of stuff. Be engaging, fun within your brand equity. Um, but develop a separate stream for those that signed up. 
should I always include uh, the calendar link inside those emails as well? Like, uh, um, you put this event into your calendar. Oh, God, yes. In all of those emails or just in the first one? Um, I would put them in all of them. I wouldn't put... I would put like a sentence below, you know, at the end or something, lost your calendar invite. Here's your, you know, click here to re-add it to your calendar. Sometimes people have, you know, some events in one calendar and some, I mean, I got six calendars going on, right? Mm -hmm. So yeah. um, it's not that much from a real estate perspective. So I would put it in just in case. I mean, it doesn't hurt. I totally agree, and I also think it's really important. Maybe just not in the last webinar, last uh, last email when I said, "Hey, come to the webinar now." Then maybe there it's kind of pointless to add it to a calendar. Uh, but yeah, in other emails, I agree. I would also add it. To be honest, I would. I love the idea of sending an email five minutes before it starts with your link to join, so I don't have to open up the calendar invite. I don't have to do anything. Mm -hmm. I get the email, you know, how many times have we been heads down with something and whoever we're supposed to meet with sends us an email and goes, hey, are we still good for now? Same kind of thing, right? Yes, yes. It makes the life of the attendee so much more easier if she doesn't need to go into the, her mailbox or into her calendar right. to search for the link, but you just send it and she can just click and be there. Yep. And, yes. And, and yes, yes. I like that idea. That's a great idea. It is. Yes. I love it too. I usually try to do it, but usually you're not five minutes before because, you know, sometimes the emails get clogged up somewhere and then the link arrives a bit too late. Uh, but yep. uh, an hour before is already also kind of good. Yep. Uh, now, before the webinar, you send the link where people can attend the webinar. Uh, when do you send that link out? In the last day email or you start sending the link already one week before or how do you do that? The link should be in the invite the minute you sign up. Okay. Because there's nothing worse than opening up a calendar invite for a webinar you want to attend and it's blank. <laughs> that is true. I agree. So, and, and, and listen, I've gotten those before and I've opened up the invite and there's no link and I'm like, I'm not going to work this hard. I'll just get the recording. If I have to work to attend your event, you have done it wrong. So at the moment of registration, the calendar invite should be set up for the time. The title should be appropriate. And because I look at my calendar, I go, what the hell have I got today, right? Make sure the reminder is on. Make sure that the link is embedded. Make sure that you have a dial-in number. And if it is a new platform, have them do a, t have a test in there too. Right. So there's so many different conferencing apps and webinar apps out there today. You know, what you don't want is, OK, I'm ready to join the webinar. It will be five minutes while we update your software. You know, yes. screw it. Screw that. I want to do it. So you lost a webinar attendee because the platform has got some plugin that has to install. So think like somebody showing up the day of the event. Have it all in there. And then the email that you send the hour before or the five minutes before, have a big friggin' link that says join now. Don't have this text link. Click here because there's 20 zillion of those friggin' things. Have a big call to action that says join now. Oh, yes. Um, and there are a few more emails that we need to talk about, which are the after webinar emails. Mm -hmm. What do you send after webinar? We talked about some great ideas that you already told, but what is like your usual go-to after webinar uh, emails? My usual go-to is when the recording is up, mainly same day, there is a thank you for showing up. We really enjoyed it. Here is any links to anything we talked about, right, that need reference. Remember, here's what we learned. Here's what we, here's what you can do. And I'll outline those because I want to, in essence, provide them notes from the call. For more resources, go here. And you're really your email design here is key to make sure that you have a template or a structure to your email that, that splits out the different content areas. Here's the link for the webinar. If you'd like to share it, go here. Here are some resources. Here are the notes, right? Because um, a lot of times in the corporate world, they, if you go to a webinar or go to a conference, they want notes of what you learned, what was there. 
Oh, really? And, oh, gosh, yeah. I have a number of clients that I write their notes for them when they go to the conferences with me. Okay. Uh, because they want to just listen, and they'll come to me and go, hey, my boss wants to see the notes. Can you write them up? And I'm like, oh, yeah, sure. You know, um, so send along notes that say, hey, here's what we talked about. Here's the takeaways. Here's the next steps. So right. basically, once again, you're doing the life of the attendee as easy as possible so that they yes. don't need to do anything. They don't need to do anything. They just need to show up, listen, and do something with it, right? Yeah. And then after that, what I'm doing is I'm engaging, like we talked about before, I'm engaging customers in one way through the account managers. I'm engaging the prospects through the salespeople directly, right? I think marketing automation, and we could do a whole webinar about this. Marketing automation should not trump salespeople's communications. Really, when you develop marketing automation, you have to take into account who's the real person talking to them. And so marketing automation after a webinar sometimes can be a hindrance and can get in the way of selling. And so you want to funnel all those things through the salesperson. So I'm going to give that person a script. I'm going to give them a couple things. I'm going to give them a couple bullets. Sometimes I've written out a couple sentences based on the prospects. So if they're talking to us about design, send this sentence. If they're talking to us about RFPs, send it this sentence. If they're talking about migration assistance, you know, send this. And so they have a choice of what they can put into the email and construct that that e that one to one email to the prospect. And then after that, what I'm doing is I may do a follow up three weeks later that says, hey, remember when you were on that webinar, we talked about this? Maybe it's a mini blog, right? We just tried this with a client. And here's some of the success that we had. It was fantastic, right? If something comes up in the news that's similar to what we talked about, I may do a post-webinar communication that's just a simple kind of a thing, right? Hey, media post reported this today. We were talking about that three weeks ago, and thank God you were there or watched the recording, right? that kind of thing. I want it to have a life of its own. Uh, I don't want to barrage the person after the webinar, right? They came, I had my conversion event, but I want to segment them out to the right people so that they communicate in the right way and have the tools to do so. So I'll create the QBR decks and slides. I may reach out personally to some of the high attendees or the high engaged people and do the offer up of the, of the exclusive meeting or whatever, and that's it. And then my social media team takes it and repeats it. I put the asset on the website and off I go, right? That is so true. The work doesn't stop after the webinar. Actually, it starts after the webinar. Then is the point when you start making the sales calls uh, and uh, and do the after, all the after webinar uh, events. And I think a lot of people get done with the webinar. They're frankly exhausted. And they have to move on to the next thing. And it's like, I just need to post a recording and send this email. And then I'm done. And it's like, no, no, I know you're tired. I know you got crap going on. I got it. I got it. But this is your job. You have to do this. You so signed up for it. Now continue You signed doing up this. for it. You said, I want to do a webinar. Like an idiot. You said, I want to do a webinar. So if you signed up to do it, you got to do it. And if you and, do it, do it correctly. Right. Now, listen, it's hard work, right? There have been points in my career where I'm like, I really do not want to do a webinar. I don't. I don't. I don't. And I fight it. And then somebody says, you got to do it. And I'm like, fine. Plug into it. Dive into it. Do it as best as you can. But if you've done the pre-work, if you've got that template set up before, if you've got the template set up after, if you've got the process all defined, then it makes it easier. It's hard when you have to custom create it every freaking time. So that, if you yeah. do the work, set it all up in advance, all you're doing is typing in text, uploading a picture, the little picture of the person. You know, make it easy on yourself. Don't, it's not Don't something to die it. on. Yeah, don't overthink it. Perfect. Yes. Yes, I totally agree. And uh, I also remember one of the first times I was doing webinars, I was so scared of everything that can go wrong. Eventually, something will go wrong, and that's fine. People will forgive you. Just start doing it. Yes, start doing it. Listen, I've been on webinars where I was in charge, and I forgot to hit the freaking record button. 
<laughs> Being that done that. <laughs> yes. And so, you know, 10 minutes into the webinar, my marketing person brushes into my office. Now I'm doing the webinar. Marketing person comes in and says, hit the freaking record button. <laughs> and so we made a conversation about that. And I, you know, I didn't start over, but I made note of it. Of, hey, thanks for joining this late breaking webinar. You know, and then future state, I would always have a piece of paper hanging on my monitor that says, push the record button. But listen, mistakes happen. It is human. Make fun of it. Have fun with it. You know what? If I forgot to push the record button, I would milk that through the post comms till I could till I could say no more. I in the social media, hey, see when Ryan forgot to hit the record button. What an idiot. You know, that kind of stuff, right? That humanistic part of marketing is what we lose. Let's not cover it up or stress out about it. Let's just say, hey, shit happens. Let's let's just admit that that's what it is. Exactly. We are all human and let's start acting like human, not like AIs. Yes, yes, yes. Oh, I totally agree with you. Listen, I think I would gladly talk with you another two hours, but we need to start wrapping it up. Uh, so my last question to you is give me three things that, I definitely should be doing when I'm going to start doing email marketing for webinars? Sure. The three things. First, you need a strategy. You need the strategy before you start the tactics. So sit down, think of those reason to believe moments, the why should people give a damn moments, right? Create a brief for yourself. The brief is the discipline to do it, right? It may not be needed, but it helps you to verbalize, to write it down so that you have a record of it and that the rest of the team that's working on it, including the speakers, know what the, what the outcome is and the goal is. So that's the first thing. Second thing is plug into it. Do as much as you can and don't just treat this as a checkbox. You are asking people to give up an hour of their time or 45 minutes of their time you are asking them to give it up. Do not cheat them out of that opportunity to learn, to do, to experience. Don't phone it in because that is a direct tie back to your brand equity. If you phone it in, then your brand is phoned in. Then your product is phoned in. If you don't put in 100%, then you are cheating your customers and your brand. And it will take a whole lot more to repair that damage. The third thing is, is think about the post activities and be creative. Whether it is that that one to one meeting with those that were highly engaged or asked a question, whether and, and what's the follow up, what's the post follow up to prospects and customers? What's your social media strategy? What's your QBR strategy if you're an agency? What is your propagation strategy if you work in a corporate environment or a bigger company to pass along that to other people, right? Think about what you can do to make it easy for people to sign up, to attend, and to prove they were there and to show value. Those are the three things. If you focus on those things, you will have a great event over and over again. Keep iterating on what you created. Make templates. Keep getting better. This is great. Great ideas. And, uh, you know, I was while we were, we were talking, I was also writing down things that I would say that uh, I learned from you and you mentioned two of them so I can't say them again so one one thing that you said was that uh, the tactics uh, bef uh, sorry strategy before tactics and the other one uh, is this last one that you said but I did mention uh, three more things that uh, I learned from you that I haven't maybe heard from anybody else before uh, so uh, one of them uh, was that if you want people to engage in the webinar, then never say that what you will learn from the webinar, but instead that you will be able to do something in five minutes. So give them actionable results, and then it will be much more easier to, for them to start uh, signing up. Yep. Second thing, so obvious, but I think that those mistakes happen the most often, which is test everything in the email. Test that uh, the links in the web uh, emails work. If you're sending out the webinar link, test that this is the correct link. I've done this mistake that I sent Oh, yeah. Out. Yeah. So that's a bad thing to do. So test it. That's the best thing that, that you can do. 
And uh, the, th the third thing that you said, which is really, really, really useful, I think, is the first post-webinar email that you are sending out. Send also all the good ideas or notes from the webinar because it reminds people what was talked about. It is another way of doing marketing for the webinar. And as you said, some uh, government or, or even private companies, they need to have the notes. So make mm -hmm. it easier for the attendee to to remember what was talked about. Those were really great ideas um, Thank that, you. that I learned from you. Thank cool. you very much. I I enjoyed talking to you. I learned a lot. I did and, too. And uh, I hope that if I have some uh, some questions about webinars, uh, then uh, I can ask you something because you seem to be the yeah. one who has done the most webinars in the world. <laughs> I'm up there. There are a few that have that have done more than me, but I am always happy to help you or or anybody. You know, this this industry has given me a lot over the last 25 years, and any way that I can give back, I try to. That is so good. And all the listeners out there, we will post uh, Ryan's uh, in LinkedIn profile under the webinar as well, so you can contact him and ask your questions as well. There we go. Maybe Thank you he'll so answer. much for having. Yes, exactly. Thank you for having me. This has been fun and just a uh, complete joy. So thank you. Thank you for, for joining us. And thank you for all the listeners as well. And uh, see you next time. All right. Ciao.